It is said that we don't grow when things are easy. We grow only when we face challenges. Hello, welcome or welcome back. Today we have a failure story. My guest is someone who not just believes in taking challenges head on, but also epitomizes the art of letting go and moving on. Ratna Kulkarni is the owner of Four Fountains De-Stress Spa and La Mira Salon here in Pune. She had an incredibly diverse career and she's agreed to share one of her failure stories with us. So let's get started. Welcome Ratna. Thank you so much for giving me your time and willingness to share your story. I know you had an incredible life from which many of us can learn. So uh, let's get started with one of the failure stories that you think has impacted you the most. So I, uh, I started my salon uh, and the spa in 2013. We were doing so well in 15 and 16 and 17. I suddenly came down to zero. At that point, I was... I really, I, there was a moment when I thought, should I close this down? But no, no. Uh, it was just for that minute. And I said, no, this is something I cannot give up. And to add to all of that, my, uh, the hairstylist and the manager took away all my data and started a salon just two buildings away. At that point, I thought I would go after them, like punish them. For a minute, I thought about that. But then I decided, Okay, how is it going to benefit me if I go after them? Or how is it going to benefit me if I do not think of doing something different? Maybe there are some mistakes which I had done, but so, so then I realized what my mistakes were. And the result of it was from 1st April 2018 to 31st December 2018, we had a revenue of one crore. I mean, hats off to my team. They were there with me throughout. We shared the same vision, and that is why they made it possible. If my team was not aligned with me, what I was thinking of giving best services, customer first, nothing would have happened. Great. Congratulations. But I want to go back to the time when you faced this loss, okay? Um, were you able to look back and analyze or understand why this happened in the first place? Yes, I did uh, try to understand that because I hadn't done any marketing. Mm -hmm. Slowly and steadily, the people had stopped coming. We had no clients. My staff left during that time. You know, it, it was a gradual process and I did not take action at that point. I did not do anything about it. Yes, I wasn't available for a certain period of time. That also added to it. But I did not take action. Oh, I should have uh, realized what the problem was and uh, done something about it, like done the marketing, or put in all that at, uh, focus, which I did later on. If I had done that, I think the situation wouldn't have come. That's wonderful. Working hard on a business and watching it fail is something many of us go through, right? But having a gumption to start all over again needs an incredible mindset. And they also say that failures teach us important and valuable lessons, right? So I want to know from you, what are the lessons that you learned from this failure? What I uh, understood is that failure is a part of life. It is something which you have to go through, understand why it has happened and not look back, just go ahead. I always look at uh, life as a stock market. See, because of my financial background, I look at it as a stock market. You cannot be having a single one, one, uh, what do you say, one directional trajectory. You have to go up, come down. And when you come down, you have to go with the bounce back. There has to be a bounce back. That is how I look at it. Even the same thing happened with the pandemic. Uh, first, I was totally devastated. I was just wondering, what am I going to do? Again, we have members, so how do I serve my members? Then I just relaxed. I said, there is nothing I can do about it. Whatever I stress out, uh, it's not going to help me. So I put that all that time to use in studying, in upgrading my skills, which helped me understand the working of my salon to a much, much, much greater extent. And then I realized that, yes, I had the capability for the coaching also. That's how that happened. Uh, that was the outcome. That was the outcome of the pandemic. That 
I uh, realized that I could, yes, coach other salon uh, owners also. I'm curious to know, you have been in financial industry, which itself is extremely time consuming, even though it may be uh, highly rewarding. You diversified into salon and spa, which is also time consuming, but I'm not sure about the rewarding factor because I'm assuming you have a lot of uh, overheads and operational glitches. What made you take it up in the first place? The first and foremost thing is that I just took it up as a challenge. I started my career in the automobile industry. So I was with two wheelers, four wheelers for about 10 to 12 years. From there, I moved on to the mutual fund industry the financial sector because that was my passion that's something which I loved doing I mean for a particular period of time but then that only became too repetitive I did not see a challenge in that and luckily I got a chance and I thought this was one more challenge that I could take take up you know something new to learn Uh, that's how I got into the salon industry and of course it was I thought it would be a little easier because the spa and the salon were franchised franchising so I didn't have to really know anything I had the company to support me which over a period of time was reduced and one company actually closed down totally closed down the salon company closed down and we were just left high and dry that way because I had put my blood and sweat into it and I started I just enjoyed doing that it was a complete challenge for me Uh, Talking to the customers, getting the customer satisfaction, managing the employees. uh, It's a big challenge. So it never got boring. Then I changed the name of my company. So now Le Mirwa Salon is totally mine. And of course, uh, I am the franchisee owner for for four Fountain Distress Spa. You know, it is rare for people to go about chasing challenges, if I may say that. And you use the word challenge multiple times. So I'm curious to know. Is it in your nature to look for challenges? And to keep doing something different. I, my my uh, mind is all the time thinking of ways of doing different businesses. Mm-hmm. Even in the spa and the salon industry, how can I do something different? I mean, that's what I, I'm continuously thinking about. It. From that only came up the idea of coaching the other salon owners. Mm-hmm. It is said that challenges make our life more interesting and overcoming them makes it more meaningful. Do you have any message for people who are watching you today who could be facing challenging situations in their life as we speak? I'll start with a small story. So we had gone for a picnic to Della Adventure, which is in Lonavala. And there uh, I went for the uh, uh, rappling, wall rappling. That is, you have to come down from the wall to the ground. So I like go walking up and then come down with the help of those ropes. That's what is rappling. So, and it was a, it was kind of rainy. So that wall was wet, but uh, then I said, no, I have to do it. So I went up and uh, as soon as I got my turn and I took the first step because the wall was wet, I slipped and I went two feet down and I thought now, I'm done. I'm finished. Nothing can happen here. I'm going to fall down. But then I just paused. My first reaction was to ask uh, the volunteer over there to help me up. Then I just thought to myself, how can that person do it? How can he take, pull me up? So I just paused for about a minute. And then I said, okay, I have to go down and I have to do it on my own strength. I had a lot of these people to guide me, but I had to do it. And I came down successfully. I cl- After that, there wasn't any problem. I just climbed down. Uh, my outlook for life is what has happened has happened. There is no way we can undo that. So what I always look at the larger picture. What is it that I want in my life? Do I want to get involved in these small, small day-to-day things and you know just spend my time over it or look at the larger picture? Go ahead. So message, I said, just work towards that vision that you have for yourself. The small things are just going to keep on happening. Like, you know, like when you have to climb the mountain, you have to cross the pebbles. And those pebbles are going to hurt you. But you have to just go on. That's it. I always had this feeling in me that I am not enough. I am not good enough. It took me a lot, lot of time to realize that yes, I am, I am worth it and I'm better than the rest. 
but i did not let that thing of not good enough that good not good enough was in my mind i did not let it pull me down but even like if i talk to people and they say i have this feeling of you know not being good enough or um, low self esteem nobody believes nobody believes me but yeah it is a fact i always had it but now right now just i would say the day uh, i decided to become a salon coach a coach for the owners i realized i'm worth it it took me that many years i would say 50 years plus that is yes <laughs> that's a really long time thank you so very much ratna for all the wisdom that you shared with us um and my sincere wishes for a prosperous and a bright future for you and your business and that's it from us if you have any questions for ratna or i leave it in the comment section below or you may reach out to me in any of the social media platforms that i'm in thank you so very much for watching i'll see you next week until then stay home stay safe